Here we're going to be looking at the tools we're going to be using. So the first tools we are going to be using is going to be our Munsell book, which is the blue book there, and then our nice little portable shovel, which is nice and fit in a small little backpack. Doesn't really take up much room, and it's pretty light and easy to transport. So the next tool we're looking at is our soil auger, which is a way to check the soil types and the, the depths much deeper than you can with a shovel without having to dig a real big hole. This way you can just drill down with this soil auger and keep looking at what soil types you have down below. So the next thing we'll be looking at is our Munsell soil chart book which is just a book of a bunch of different colors that soils can be. And so it's got a lot of different shades and for a lot of different types and so it's a really good way to record your data because using these shades and these numbers you can get relating to these different shades of soil is nationally recognized and even globally recognized in the scientific community. So if you record it by the uh, Munsell number that you get from the thing, it'll be really easy for another scientist across the state or across the world to figure out what type of soil you're looking at just by that number. So here we're going to be digging our first hole and we're going to be taking a soil plug. So pretty much just what a soil plug is, is a cone of soil. And so you pretty much just take your shovel and you put it in at an angle, but you kind of make a giant circle, and they're always going at kind of the similar angle, so you get a nice cone-shaped chunk of soil called a soil plug. And this is a nice easy way to be able to see how the soil is actually structured. So next we're going to be looking at our soil horizon chart. So soil horizons are pretty much just the layers of soil and the different types. So the first layer that you find right up at the top your organic layer, which is pretty much your decaying leaves, your root systems that are decaying, your old pine needles, and just anything that's down there, even bark, your old logs, that's just kind of on the floor, getting all decomposed. And then your A horizon is your surface soil, which is your really high nutrient-rich soil, which is pretty much where most of the plants get their nutrients and where they root into and so that's kind of the most important soil level for farming or for tree planting or for anything like that and then your B horizon or your subsoil is simply just a uh, is pretty much the surface soil of a bygone era that has been pushed down and has a lot of the nutrients have been leached out or removed from it so there'll still be roots growing down into there but there'll be much less nutrients allowed or located there and then you go down to your C horizon which is your substratum which is pretty much non-organic and so there's going to be very little organic if any which is going to be pretty much going to be just sand and rocks down there will be primarily what's down there or other types of soils but you won't have much for your organic layers or organic compounds. So here's a look at what our soil plug looks like when it's taken out of the ground. You can kind of start to look closely and see some of the differences between the layers of soil as you go deeper. So now I'm going to be taking an even closer look at our plug. And so you can see this first layer is very spongy. This is the O horizon. It's got a lot of organic matter in it and mixing the soil. So a lot of pine needles and decaying organic matter. It's very, very spongy. Now you look a little bit lower, you can see our surface soil which has a lot, it's got a nice very rich dark black color which is a good sign, it's got a lot of nutrients in there, it's a little bit frozen so it's not super easy to look at but you can still see some of the texture, there's still root systems and needles and other organic matter decaying in it that's not fully decayed, that's been buried. And if you look it up close, it's got a little bit of a grit to it so it's nice and sandy, some soils will be almost completely smooth in them but this one's pretty gritty so I guess this is a fairly sandy soil but not incredibly sandy. Just see up close is how it looks and then we'll look back at the organic layer you can see how that looks and how there's just so much more stuff in it that's organic so now we can actually be putting it under our month cell book and so I flipped this page because it's gonna be the one that's most likely gonna be on because this page is normally upland soils there's other pages that are for like soils that you can find in low oxygen areas or swamps but this one is for upland areas and so this is most likely going to be where we're looking at. So you just take the dirt, 
and you actually kind of, for the soil, you can put it underneath and put it through those little, so you can kind of see it through those little slots. You kind of mark it up to which one you think it looks the closest to. So I'm checking all of them, and I think it looks pretty close to the one down there. So I'll record that in my notebook, and then we'll have a nice data point of what type of soil we had. And so now we're going to be pulling out our soil auger, which pretty much you just put it in the ground and you start spinning it like you would spin a screwdriver, but just a much, much bigger screwdriver. And it'll burrow its way through there. And you keep turning and turning and turning, and you can see how it's kind of pushing the soil up between the middle cavity in it. You'll keep turning until you kind of hit it up to just where the middle cavity stops, and you'll pull it on out. And the good thing about this, it's very, very sharp, and has a pretty strong blades, and so if there's roots in the way, or small rocks, it'll either cut them or push them out of the way. And so sometimes it can take a little bit of force, especially if you're hitting roots. But you should be able to cut through that with enough effort. And there is even attachments for these to put them onto drills of sorts and other ways if you are having issues. But there you can see our nice little soil plug coming out. So this is actually what it looks like. It's very dark soil, so this is the surface soil. And now for our next auger, we're going to kind of clear it out a little bit. You don't want to have all that extra leaf litter around there because it has a chance to actually kind of fall into it and that can be kind of a nuisance so we'll just slide it right back down the same hole we'll start spinning because sometimes it doesn't go to slide down so if you start spinning it can go down a little bit easier keep spinning and spinning and spinning and it'll keep digging it up until it fills the entire shaft of the soil logger and then we'll pull it back out now here's a look at our two soil augers back to back you can see that there's already a good change in color and we're only about a foot deep. And so we're going to keep going and see if that trend keeps going. Now we're going to be going even further down. We're going to see if we can get past the surface layer. As you can see, the last two we just looked at were still surface layer because we're in a forest, a nice healthy forest. And so it's got quite a bit of soil that is very nice, rich and healthy. So we're going to keep auger and down and see if you can get past that and so if you're in like a farm setting you might not have as much of a surface soil or a, a horizon as we have here now you can see with these comparing these three soils that we just grabbed out it's getting progressively more tan which means it's losing nutrients as it goes down which Maybe nutrients that was lost or used up already, or nutrients that was never there in the first place. So, we had a good bit of soil difference, and so we're probably going to grab one last one and see if we can completely get out of the surface horizon, because it's getting pretty low nutrients. So we're going to go just a little bit further and see what we get. So now looking at our comparison of all the soils we have dug out, you can see at the bottom of the screen we have a nice rich dark soil which is our A horizon. Then we go down to our slightly less dark colored soil which is still pretty nutrient heavy and so that's still good growing soil. And we'll go to our next batch, kind of our brownish tan, so our very light soil and that is got very little nutrients and so that could be some pretty old soil that has had a lot of its nutrients leached out. And we go to the last group, which is almost orangish tan, which is pretty much nutrient free. And so that would be our subsoil. And so that would have little reason for plants to want to root down that far unless it's just for stability. So you can see, even though we went only down about two or three feet of total distance, that the soil can change quite a bit over that very small amount. So that's kind of why it's important to look at this because it's very easy for this to change from area to area. Some areas might have much, much deeper A horizons and some areas much have less. So if you're looking to plant trees or farm or just want to see how healthy your forest is, this could be a very good way to see how your soil can support it. Now if we compare our all of our soils we augured to on our month cell chart, you can see probably our first batch was probably about a 2-1 soil 
and so that's that nice dark one in the bottom left. And then if I were to guesstimate, our next grouping was probably about a, a 4-2, maybe a 4-1 soil, because it's a little more tan. And our next one was probably pushing a bit closer to a, like a 5-4 around there. And then we get even further in, we got about a 6-6, a six, six, then maybe all the way up to about an 8-8 eight, eight when we get really far in there where it gets really, really low nutrients. So you can just see that by looking at this soil chart, we've got a big range of soils. And then if you were to take this and get real data out of it, you'll just record it at each depth what soil you found at each depth and record that and make a soil profile and you probably end up doing a lot more augering in a lot of different areas to kind of map out your soil and see if it's pretty consistent or see how it changes. I would like to thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below.